this is what I like to call the potager garden and uh, it's a big rainbow different colors it's got cabbage here in the front radishes uh, different variety of lettuce kales and the very far back potatoes these are cabbages it's mostly eaten out by bugs which that happens every time I plant these I'm just giving up Here's the north side of that garden in the front yard, and um, these are a variety of different florals, but um, the bring in the bees. Uh, I have a lot of pockets that of seeds that didn't work, so I'll probably just go to a store, big box store, and buy something with color and add that in. These are uh, Yukon Gold potatoes, I believe. That was, and it's time to put dirt. It was long time. I've just been really busy. So, and then. Um, black Valentine beans these are slippery silk pink beans and then I have my four varieties of squash well let's go have a closer look at that okay oh yeah here we go you see that the bees have found the board too which is the first thing to bloom over here caserta squash these are zephyr squash over on this row and I have lots of here look at that fruit on there it's beautiful and uh, like I said lots of girls in here but I didn't have a boy till today so awesome and then this plants gonna have lots of boys but um, there's just girls all along the line hey it's March 29th and look I already have cucumbers coming down the line there's one up there they're all down the line you can see them so and the dars are there too but the dark cucumber is just so tiny and um, they don't have the advantage that the socrates has here because Socrates, socrates excuse me are just all females and they will they don't actually need bees or anything which is why i picked them a year ago uh, i was having trouble with you know, hand keeping up with hand pollinating and I had no bees in my area, but yeah, look at that. So, you know, it looks like the bees are coming back. It's slowly and the more and more flowers I add, like the marigolds don't attract them so much, but I have a lot of flowers everywhere in the rest of the garden and uh, not just this garden, other gardens I have too. Clumps and spineless okra are beginning to break ground here. We planted them about 10 days ago, but maybe even close to two weeks ago. Uh, but we had a super bad rainstorm, hail storm, cold air. And so, yeah, it, they just didn't like that. But um, the peppers, everything, we did not have hail at my house. We were on the outer edge, but people just to the east of me got pummeled and their cabbage heads looked like slaw and it's it was so sad. Uh, tomatoes broke, corn broke, you know. So I just thought I would just show you. These are right here in front of me. These are uh, paste. No, sorry. These are the paste tomatoes here. These are a variety of striped tomatoes. So, and um, same here. There's a lot of indigo apples right in this section. There might be a green furnace here. And uh, these are. Camparis back here and they seem to be yeah equal with what the, whatever the other Publix tomato was that I grew but I will say the Camparis are definitely out producing I'll show you a video of that pretty cool look at that you see oh, that's broke oh, too close to it but anyhow it's broke right there and yet the plant is completely growing blooming and it's grown at least um, about 10 inches to a foot beyond that there's some more blooms this thing is not even close to dead considering most of it, I would say 80 to 90% of it is broke. That's 
that's crazy. That's that's the beauty of a tomato plant. Wow. The soccer the Socrates and dark cucumbers were the first to bloom, but this Armenian cucumber, which is in the melon family, um, actually is the third, but it's pretty close to time with the, the Parisian pickling cucumber. It's hard to see that. Sorry for the, but there's a bloom right there. Well, it was this morning. So, yep, they're pretty close. It's walking along and you know what and then I see that and I'm like no way oh my goodness so I got actually two blooms yep one two that's all but wow and beautiful zinnias too okay so I just was saying that the aphids had found my Chinese red noodle, but the ladybugs are on them. Now they're kind of busy right now, but looks to me like they were at least trying to do their job until they got a little distracted. This is my market garden and it is phasing out as you can see these beautiful blooms on the broccoli and the bees are all over them and that's been nice and it has served us very well for the last couple months with broccoli and you know there's still a little bit on there but not much um, so we'll look forward to ripping that out soon but I'm letting the bees enjoy it a little bit longer my cabbage is right there. Hard to see with on the camera with this harsh sun. Um, but anyhow, there's... Um, I had to cut because a plane went right overhead. So these Better Boy tomatoes, one, two, and three. That's the Everglades on the end. Um, they're phasing out for the, for the summer and the heat. The pineapples are in the back and rosemary over there. Um, sweet potatoes we pulled a couple weeks ago. But, um, yeah, so this is kind of what's left. The on green onions are going to uh, seed. And um, cilantro to flowering. I do have celery, 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 celery. Uh, a little bit more there, too. <clears throat> so that's, that's good. We'll see if it makes it with as the heat turns on. Um, back here we have a few Brussels sprouts. I also have some um, late uh, collards in this. Oh, not that. You know what that is? That's lettuce. When I pulled out the old lettuce, the other lettuce seeds from the fall germinated. Uh, but right next to it, that's a collard. There's a couple collards in here. And then um, it's just starting to happen, but uh, you'll start seeing, let's see, there's one. There are beans that I put in here. They just came, um, got here. So there's a bean back there. But um, if I can ever get some good rain on here, uh, we will have beans sprouted up in these empty spots. So a nice bush bean. Uh, I want to say it was Blue Lake. So here's a volunteer dill. And uh, let me just show you this real quick. See the little heads on the onions? It's pretty, um, but unintentional. Wasn't going to do that. I was going to actually eat these, and I still might. So, and the you can still see it. There's a little row of lettuce that keeps getting hidden, and then carrots. Three rows of carrots in the back. Speaking of carrots, this is a uh, pusa acita. Uh, bolting and this is the bloom that the Pusa Asita carrot makes so it's really beautiful and delicate it has side sprouts kind of kind of like you'd see with a sunflower if you will but just a different color and uh, there's the carrots there's another one back there going to bolt so um, I will tell you that the Pusa Asita compared to orange and yellow carrots is growing faster and it's bolting faster. 
So the Danvers half long and the Amarillo carrot are um, taking a longer time, but they're also not bolting. And then as you can see, we have um, pineapples in here and they're just doing their thing for the next three months. They don't require a lot of maintenance, just they'll get all that good summer rain and then be ready. Okay, let's see, I have a broody girl. Oh yes, hissing at me. Let me have your your children. <laughs> That's my joke with her. She doesn't think it's too funny though. I'm going to take your babies. Especially since there's no rooster at our place. Oh, did you want to get in the video? There's Bud Man. Say hi everybody. I'm just a baby. Do they smell good? Yeah, they do smell good. 